Hi all, F here from Epic Rides and Tours Sidecar Adventures. As some of you all know, uh, I've been doing a lot of work on Swampy recently. Um, to get to the gearbox, there's a whole load of stuff that has to come out. Uh, and I decided rather than doing one great big long uh, video about the entire job from start to finish, I would break it up and uh, produce several shorter videos uh, to uh, well keep your attention really <laughs> I mean, yep, there i am waiting 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 for the bit about the gearbox and he's only taking the sodding battery out <laughs> anyway this bit is about the air filter now there's quite a lot of stuff to take off and the first bit is or well, the first bit I'm doing is this, it's called a branch in the parts manual. So it's basically an air duct from the filter box to the carby. Um, undo it at both ends, remove it. Do the same the other side um, via means of the pipe clamps, the hose clamps at each end. And uh, that will give you a little bit of room to work on the uh, getting the air box out part of the job. I tried to uh, make a clear video of the removal of the air filter box but uh, yeah you couldn't see much of what I was trying to show <coughs> so excuse me um, underneath the air filter box is like a, a trapezoid shaped air duct and it has two um, holes in it that hold the entire air, air filter box in place. One is here and the other one is here. So that's also doubles, that's also doubling up as a securing mount for the starter motor. The hole issue is connected to the carbies on each side via um, like dog leg shape uh, ducts they're called branches in the Ural part manual and as you see I've had to take the carburetors off to make it easier to get the air filter box in and out um, also there's a crankcase breather which is over the back here okay if you don't connect that to your air filter box the stench is unimaginable um, <laughs> I've actually been behind a Ural in another Ural when the Ural in front uh, for some reason blew its crankcase hose off and I can tell you you really don't want to be there <laughs> okie dokie so let's have a a quick book book butchers at what I'm talking about here are the two holes where the aforementioned bolts go this goes to the crankcase breather and here and here are the attachment ends for the branches now I'll show you one of them which is over here in a nice safe place in the sidecar okay now there is a left hand one and there is a right hand one you will know if you've tried to fit the wrong one because it won't fit <laughs> okie dokie oh don't you love it when geckos interrupt what you're trying to say <laughs> okay we have covered the removal of the air filter box in a previous uh or upcoming video I'm getting out of step at the moment I have absolutely no idea whether I've published stuff or I haven't I need a holiday so this is the air filter box and uh, the lid is held on by a couple of uh, allen headed screws or bolts whichever you prefer to call them so we've undone those two little screws and we pop the lid it has a rubber ring in place to seal it now, I don't think that was sitting very well 
and uh, this is actually a K&N filter that's been put in um, when I first got the bike I got it fully serviced and uh, the mechanic who uh, did that work put the K&N filter in um, yeah <laughs> it seems to be doing a good job and the filter uh, is held in place by two 10mm bolt slash nut assemblies and guess what <laughs> I've still got it my 10mm socket it hasn't abandoned me and just in case I can't find it there you go <laughs> yeah, I never tear a tire of talking about this one I got it from uh, a well-known um, motor parts and accessories shop and they actually had this for sale for 10 bucks and it was in the secure display along with all the um, all the other things that people like to pinch but honestly <laughs> 10 bucks <laughs> well I've lost about three points of sweat um, this fella here um, sits that way up with two nuts here and here on these two bolts which come through the holes in the top of the filter and uh, I undid those and the filter would not move I tried swearing, I tried crying, I tried more swearing and eventually I said sod it and uh, I took, there's a, a back plate um, there off which gave me access to the other side of the intake hole and then I got a block of this and I pushed it through the intake hole so that it contacted there on the filter and I gave it a couple of gentle wellies with a two pound engineer hammer all right <laughs> struth almighty <laughs> the thing is though I mean I had to take it out um, to get the job I want done and I don't know if you can see um, the amount of muck that's in that um, she's done about uh, eight or nine thousand k's since the last time this was well since it was put in and it's been off-road a lot and yeah uh, about time that she got a clean so uh, as I said before this is a nice simple job or maybe I didn't say it before damn it I'm saying it again uh, I've actually never had a vehicle with a K&N filter on it um, I know some people prefer them. I know some people dislike them. Um, but, uh, yeah, since it's only the first time I've ever done this, I thought I'd share it with people who may also be first-timers. If you're an expert and you find something wrong in what I do, enter it in the comments down below, and I'll be uh, glad to read them. So, you know, I've brought it into the uh, laundry now. Don't tell the missus. And uh, I'm going to wash this out from the clean side to the dirty side. If you do it the other way around, all you're doing is driving the uh, dirt further into the filter. And obviously you don't want that. Now, um, low pressure water is required. So from a slowly running tap or hose with no uh, nozzle on the end that will be fine so I'm not sure if you can actually see this but there's down there on the you see the bottom of that on the sink the bottom of the sink grot by the bucket load well maybe not bucket load but hey I never said I don't exaggerate Yep. Okay. 
okay so I've now finished rinsing it um, and that's the inside compared to the outside uh, this the inside being where the dirt is collected uh, now I'm gonna because I've had this in some pretty filthy um, dusty places I'm going to repeat this process but uh, I'm guessing that that will be just overkill uh, but I've got to let it dry now naturally so uh, some of the uh, YouTube vids and other sources that I've used will tell you don't use something like a heat gun or a hairdryer because it actually you stand the risk of pushing the filter material away from where it's meant to be I uh, cleaned this a couple of days ago and I left it to dry naturally um, it looks a lot cleaner than it was but uh, not 100% satisfied so I'm going to give it another blast and uh, and see what happens right so this long bolt goes in through that side and this short bolt with a washer goes on this side why don't I put a washer on this end because if you look there's actually a raised lip around the outer side of that hole um, and if you put a washer on it it would a look ridiculous and B be useless right now you will find that these don't actually catch on anything that's because you have to put some nuts on the other side okay so here's the longer bolt and here's the shorter bolt and this is the side that you put your plain washers on if you can <laughs> and tighten them up righto so here's our uh, air filter box dismantled the air filter a couple of bits and pieces that have got to fit back on it nothing really um, frighteningly uh, complex, complex. I will undo the knot in that tongue later. Um, I really must get the patience to make these things 35 times and then assemble all the bloopers, but I don't. Okay, now that circle there connects, is, it actually is the air intake, which is directed in by this item screwed to the bottom of the air filter box and the air filter here therefore receives air from this way and it blows out here all around that means any dirt um, sand dust particulates big chunks of stone <laughs> no um, actually there were some funny objects in this when I cleaned it out but uh, yeah um, just goes to show what you can pick up off of an Aussie road uh, so this is the side that we have to oil and the oil comes in a spray can and it's it's really not hard just spray it on all over Henry there we go um, dry off any silly excess around the edges and then you can plonk that in the air filter case. Couple of little support pillars which slip over the mounting bolts for this top part of the air filter and yeah, give that a bit of friendly persuasion and all's good. And you've got a couple of uh, little lock nuts and plain washers to hold the whole thing in place and then after that you can look at putting this on um, what you will find is that this <laughs> will not 
mount with the air filter in place because the air filter covers up this little hole here which is where that goes so lesson for the uh, the new player audio there's the air filter in place appropriately oiled through the inside that's so that all the dust and muck that comes in through here gets caught before it comes out and into the engine actually goes out through these two end pipes which go through some rubbery plasticky uh, tubing that uh, is called a branch in the uh, Ural manual and through the branch to the carburetors in the case of this bike. Now I'll take these out because we need to do them later. Okay, now this is a bit untidy, but that seems to be the only way to actually fit that with a little bit of um, persuasion. Well, I found the uh, rubber seal where I left it, <laughs> as usual. Um, you can possibly see here, I hope you can, uh, this has been buggerized around. It's, it's not, it wasn't fitted correctly um, at some stage during its life. And it's actually quite difficult to get it to sit uh, where it needs to in order to complete the a proper seal. So I'm going to try a wee bit of this glue stuff. Aviation former gasket. Now this is the stuff that the two halves of the gearbox housing uh, is actually glued together with too. So um, if this can hold the rubber seal in place such that it doesn't um, get squeezed out of position when I put the lid onto the filter box then this will have done its job uh, I think it's a good chance it's a sight better than um, ordering the part and then waiting for it to come down um, by the vagaries of Aussie Post um, I've had letters posted in the same town as me and they've taken seven working days to get to me. So, uh, <laughs> thanks very much, I'll Aussie Post, but no thanks. Um, yeah, there's been a few times I've actually done the uh, the ride or drive up to Urala to uh, get the parts directly off of um, our lovely people at Ural HQ, uh, or Ural Australia HQ and uh, as you know they're, they're good people um, they do the job very nicely um, I've got no complaints at all about them only praise but uh, they too are um, stuck with using Aussie Post to deliver bits and pieces that uh, you need you can't do without them and uh, <laughs> they're going to take forever to get to you. So let's see. Oh, that moved. Probably give it about 10 minutes for the, the glue to actually sink in or do what it has to do. Okay. We're giving it about 10 minutes. We'll see how well it goes. Um, yeah. You need this, otherwise air gets sucked in to this area around the filter and that means that it doesn't get filtered and rushes off down the uh, branches into the carbies and causes all kind of mayhem. So, let's see how we go. feeling about for the hole. No, nope, that's not going to work. For Pete's sake. Take two. 
<laughs> I'm going to try and collect all these bloopers. I really am. Um, <laughs> right. This is going to be a bit of a fiddle. But, oh yeah, I've got it lined up properly first time this time. Probably about the 14th in all. And just screw them in. Again, they don't need to be extra super tight. Uh, just make sure that you have a good seal. Okay. That's it. No rattling, no mo movement. She's good to go. We can put her back on the engine. Um, once, of course, we <laughs> get the gearbox in place. Ah, that wasn't too bad, was it? A fairly simple thing, really, but uh, you know, that air filter box with the filter in it weighs about five flipping kilos. Um, really solid. The newer bikes have got a, uh, a plastic uh, air filter box, which probably, um, yeah, probably makes it easier on the engine. <laughs> Not so much weight to cart around all the time. Um, yeah, so... Did anyone notice, by the way, that uh, I spray painted the lid of the air filter box before I put it back on the bike? Yeah. Any people who reckon, put your hand up down below. So if you're here this long, thank you very much for staying. Uh, please click on like, uh, click on subscribe so you get the option of uh, clicking on the bell uh, to alert you <laughs> when I post another video. See you next time.